The US economy is collapsing. Riots fill the streets of LA, New York, and all other major cities. All this because of China's economy failing? Surely not. Well, let's now see how that could be a reality. If you've been reading the US news over the last few years, you've undoubtedly seen a little hostility aimed at China. If you follow Chinese news, you know that the bad feeling works both ways. No matter what side you're on, propaganda will tell you that the other side is at fault. The Chinese communists, Americans are told, not for the first time, are a threat to their way of life. Countless headlines state China is the biggest threat to US economic and national security, and possibly the largest threat to the global order. But how does this war, so far a war of mostly words, end? It's hard to say, but one prediction we'll make right now is not well if someone does indeed cast the first stone, and we mean for both nations. The US without China's imports would mean some of you not getting the phones you want, certainly not getting them at prices you've come to expect. You might end up walking around without a phone in very expensive shoes, since China and the US are close trading partners where clothing is concerned. And what about that $30 billion in trade the US agricultural sector does with China? If China were no longer flush, the US pork industry would suffer, as China is one of the biggest importers of US pork. It's the same with corn. The US relies on China to buy American corn. As for US soybeans, 60% of all US soybean exports go to China. You might think a disruption in the corn or pork trade with China wouldn't affect you, but it would mean many people out of work in the US. It would be mayhem on steroids. So you might be wondering why any of this would happen in the first place. So before we get back to disruption in trade and how it'll definitely affect your life, we need to set the battleground for you. At the fundamental level, the China versus US thing is a major difference of ideologies in a world where the US is the sole superpower, the hegemon, having unofficially made itself the supreme leader of liberal democracy. The US wants things to stay this way and for the world to remain unipolar, meaning one superpower rules over the planet without being contested. As President Joe Biden said recently, this is a battle between the utility of democracies in the 21st century and autocracies. He's not wrong. This is a conflict in part about how countries are run, underpinned as always by economic interests. China wants a multipolar world in which the US doesn't play the big boss at the end of every level of global power games. It wants just as much power, influence, and money. Since 2013, China has been investing heavily all over the world through its Belt and Road Initiative. It's invested untold amounts of money in around 150 countries that, for sure, have often benefited from vast improvements to infrastructure. This also gives China much more influence in the world. Critics of China have called this neo-colonialism, a kind of trap for developing nations now in debt to China, a country leaking into every corner and crevice of the globe. China has been burned in the past, Xi Jinping tells them, so watch out. Learn from what we've experienced. These liberal democracies pack a hard punch. They will stomp on you when you're down and desecrate your grave. He also regularly reminds his citizens about China's century of humiliation, in which starting with the British and their unscrupulous opium wars, the once technologically superior nation of China suffered blow after blow from the West, bringing it to its knees over decades of shame. This is why Xi Jinping has been adamant about integrating his nation into the world economy. He doesn't want history to repeat itself. And this is why the US media calls China's rise an existential threat much more worrying than the threat from poor old Russia. Behind the trade wars lies this fundamental fear of the US that China might topple it in terms of power, economic, or even military. That might seem like being overly concerned to some of you, but China has hardly been lying low. And in terms of world history, the powerful have always spun into a cycle of decline while the less powerful have risen up. And history always repeats itself. Great powers should always keep an eye on how the end might come. After World War II, China was far from being a great power. It was still bleeding in that century of humiliation. Then under the leader Mao Zedong, utterly disastrous policies created untold suffering in China. But change was afoot. China was about to be transformed from a frog back into the prince it was, thanks to the kiss of capitalism. Around the time that Mao died in 1976, China's communist rulers modernized the country. China opened up with these modern leaders, aware of what ruin isolationist policies had caused in the past. In 19 in 1979, China began diplomatic and trade relations with the US. Slowly but surely, it became a manufacturing center of the world. Its economic rise was what you might call meteoric, thanks in part to its tight links to the US economy, but also due to its developing relations with Japan, which needed China's coal and oil. 
In 1980, when the US's GDP was 2.8 trillion, China's GDP was a measly 306 billion. A decade later, China's GDP was just 394 billion, while the USA's was 5.9 trillion, a far cry from the economic growth we see today. Then China got going. 2005, $2.2 trillion, 2010, $6 trillion, 2020, $14.6 trillion, not far behind the US. You might have heard from some sources that China's GDP will overtake the US's in the next decade, but that's unlikely. After all, while the Chinese GDP saw a year-on-year -year rise of about 10% for many years, it slowed down as of late to 7%. This is one reason why some analysts see disaster looming for China. Before we discuss that, we should talk more about the trade war. This is not the main reason why China is likely to go running into problems down the road, but it can't be ignored in this show today. China, Canada, and Mexico are the US's biggest trade partners. In 2021, the US imported $307 billion worth of goods from Canada. In turn, Canada imported $357 billion worth of goods from the US. That was only a small trade imbalance. Mexico's trade imbalance with the US is a bit larger, but it's nothing compared to the trade imbalance the US has with China. This deficit in trade with China is what makes a lot of Americans unhappy for perhaps overly simplistic reasons. If you were buying all your bananas from Jack, and Jack was buying all his oranges from you, you could both be happy doing a good trade. But what if Jack said to hell with your crappy oranges, I don't want them? That would create a trade deficit. You'd feel like you were losing out. Among nations, while deficits aren't always a bad thing, large deficits can indeed have a negative impact on the economy. China has quite a history with trade deficits. It's a sore point and one reason why it's now acting the way it does on a global scale. In the mid-1800s, Imperial China wouldn't buy British goods. It just wanted British silver for all the stuff it was selling to Britain. So, Britain's sometimes sketchy East India Company started selling its Indian-made opium to Chinese merchants in Canton, and it got British silver back for it. The Brits went and got the Chinese hooked on a heroin precursor. It wasn't exactly ethical, but it sorted out the trade imbalance. When China complained about the illegal opium and destroyed lots of it, the British used its mighty warships to easily defeat China in the Opium War, and then introduced a bunch of new rules under treaties that crippled the Chinese economy for many years. The Brits also took Hong Kong, a huge loss of face for China, who viewed the West as backward and uncivilized before this. Chinese people now constantly hear that this is the reason why it has to be a wolf warrior in the global economy, they're taught to be skeptical of the West. As one Western pundit put it, China has a never again mentality. It's a major reason why China will not back down to Western pressure and one reason why trade will be the main reason for the Chinese economic collapse. Moving on, China exported about $537 billion worth of goods to the US in 2022, and the US imported about $154 billion that year from China, which was a huge trade imbalance. That's partly why there's still a trade war. The US, unlike the Brits, can't get the Chinese hooked on drugs. In fact, with so much Chinese-made fentanyl in the US, it's the other way around. Like the Brits in the past, the US has said this imbalance is not fair. On top of that, the US has blamed China time and again for stealing intellectual property. After all, China seems to have gotten really good really fast at making high-end tech goods. You name it, the US is saying China has taken it. Pharmaceuticals formulas, blueprints for weapons, blueprints for cutting-edge technologies, all collectively worth trillions. It should be said that there have been a lot of acquisitions that haven't come with smoking guns, but needless to say, the US doesn't trust China. That's why it's been busy trying to cripple China's tech industry, such as kicking Huawei in the face and later under Biden trying to ensure China can't get the latest generation microchips that it needs to make all the fancy tech stuff, including Black Mirror-esque AI and super smart weapons. The US might not always be right about spying and stealing, but make no mistake, China has a long and lurid history of intellectual property theft. Something had to be done about that. This is where the US's controversial former president, Donald Trump, comes in. He used these reasons to start the trade war, plus some talk about the fundamental battle we mentioned earlier. Trump started putting tariffs on Chinese goods. Do you remember Jack's bananas? What if Jack's mom said, they're now more expensive because she's added a tax to them? That would be a tariff. Now you might have to grow your own bananas or at least buy them from your dad, hence keeping trade in the family. It's what Trump did with China. He put tariffs on many Chinese imports, hoping it would incentivize people to buy American goods. Remember that many American companies rely on cheap Chinese products. In 2018, $550 billion in tariffs were put on Chinese goods, and China put tariffs equaling $185 billion on US goods. Nonetheless, at the end of the day, it's hard to say who benefited or lost. Critics said maybe the tariffs didn't work at all in the bigger scheme of things, but most said something still had to be done about China's geopolitical rise in power. 
Meanwhile, China was talking about its Made in China 2025 initiative, promising to use its massive workforce and manufacturing plants to increase production and exports dramatically. It wasn't talking about making plastic toys that cry and fart, it meant high-tech products. These are hard to make without using high-grade microchips, which is why the US last year introduced new legislation that makes it harder for China to get its hands on such chips. China wants to be self-sufficient in this regard, but that won't happen for a while yet. Moreover, in 2020, China made a trade deal with the US promising it would buy more goods, but at the end of 2022, the media talked about a historic failure. China only ended up buying 57% of the goods it promised it would buy. The US was none too pleased and started cooking up more ways to hurt China. There is a little problem, though, when you start making it hard for a huge trade partner to import stuff from your country and export stuff to it, this can mess up your own industries. For instance, those tariffs we just mentioned, introduced by Trump, cost close to a quarter million American jobs. If China hurts, so does the US, like it or not. They're reliant on each other. As you'll soon see, this is not a relationship that can be broken, and if it is, it can lead to massive consequences for both countries. The US-China trade encompasses all kinds of things both countries need from each other. This is why the flow of goods just keeps flowing, and why, at the end of the day, the tariffs didn't change much at all. As one report stated late in 2021, the irony is that three years after Trump's tariffs were initiated to fix the US trade deficit, bilateral trade between the United States and China has now rebounded to all-time highs. China's trade surplus has increased and the US deficit has gotten worse. Fights over trade may not be the only reason why China's big economy goes into freefall and the US really gets to see what it's like when its nemesis is in trouble. Big trouble. You already know that China's overall growth has slowed down, which was made worse when it introduced its zero COVID strategy. Late in 2022, reports were saying domestic and international trade were looking in poorer shape. And to top that off, the yuan was looking weak which is, as normal, starting to spook investors. The graphs all show that retail sales, manufacturing, and various investments all missed the targets that China was expecting. Chinese economists were talking about mass unemployment in their country, less domestic consumption, and a slump in the Chinese property market. Everywhere international investors look, they read worrying headlines, such as The Guardian's China's economy is losing momentum. If you were the kind of person that revels in good versus bad narratives, and China is the baddie, that might have looked like a positive thing. But everyone was reminded that if China falls, other countries fall. Here's a worst-case scenario where that is really bad for the US. If China's economy keeps on this downward path and hits a hard place, it might have to think about doing something with its US debt. In case you didn't know, China is one of the biggest holders of US debt at close to $1 trillion. This money is held in treasuries. For China, these can help maintain an export-driven economy and give it some credit credibility on the global economic scene. The situation has also made people worried over the years since the US is effectively a debtor nation. It owes money to more countries than the countries that owe it money. The frightening scenario people have talked about is if China suddenly decides to sell all those treasuries, which won't just have serious implications inside China, but it'll create chaos in the US economy. If China's economy does get much worse, maybe selling US debt could be an option. This is why some people are saying that the debt the US is in is being held as a kind of Chinese weapon. If China did dump those treasuries, chaos would break loose, but it would also break loose inside China, and the rest of the world would come down hard on China for what they will say is China disrupting the global markets on purpose. It would make China about as popular as a Satanist who accidentally walked into a banquet held by holy crusaders. That's why it won't happen, or according to some analysts, it could only happen in a very extreme scenario, such as a military conflict with the US and its allies. In this case, China might try to crash the US economy and then persuade every other country that the US isn't likely to pay back its debts to other nations. As some analysts have said, in this nightmare scenario, China takes this almighty dump of a US debt and then refuses to buy another cent while warning other nations that the US debt is not worth the paper it's printed on. The initial fallout would certainly be bad, and depending on the reaction of other countries, it could lead to catastrophic consequences for the US and any country linked to it economically, so nearly every country on the planet. As we said though, this kind of doomsday event wouldn't happen overnight, but once the ball got rolling it'd be hard to stop. 
China knows that to do such a thing would surely hurt the US, but at the same time, China would also destroy its own economy and any international credibility it has built up. To get to that point, China would have to be really desperate. Its economy would have to tank, which is what it might seem the US wants, but in actuality, it's definitely not what the US wants. As we've explained, China being desperate is also bad for the US. Many US businesses rely on the Chinese market for their exports. Many US businesses need Chinese imports for them to exist. China's struggle would be felt worldwide, and it would mean a lot of unemployment in the US, which might polarize Americans even more. When butterflies flap their wings in China, it's very plausible that Americans might take to the streets to scream at each other about their political beliefs. Someone will have to shoulder the blame for all the losses. After all, millions of people will be out of work, and those still in work will see the prices of goods shoot up. There would be massive disruptions to the US economy, especially in the areas of agriculture, manufacturing, and technology. Many US companies rely on Chinese parts and components. US companies that rely heavily on China have fairly diverse supply chains, but they still need China. We're talking about big companies too, such as Walmart, Nike, Apple, and GM. A major disruption to their supply chain would certainly negatively affect their operations in the US. It's not all about goods, but the components that go into them. GM and Apple would really, really struggle without China. GM would certainly be laying off a good number of its 97,000 US employees. Walmart would be saying goodbye to a good chunk of its 2.2 million workers. Amazon also might want to lay off many of its 1.6 million workforce. At the same time, this disruption will mean fewer jobs are created. Small companies in the US would also be facing trouble. Just in 2021, China exported $134 billion worth of electrical stuff to the US, $114 billion in machinery, including parts of nuclear reactors, $39 billion in furniture and fittings, and just a bit less in toys and games, billions more in plastic steel, chemicals, medical apparatus, meat and fish, and even knitwear. One source said China exported just over $6 billion alone in bird skin, feathers, artificial flowers, and human human hair. Now you can understand why people would be rioting. If for some reason China's economy suddenly collapsed, you would feel it, all of you watching this video. You'd scream at politicians who used to talk about bringing down the Chinese economy. The trade war isn't going to directly lead to the Chinese economy collapsing, but China is definitely feeling the impacts of it. That's why it's just invested 1 trillion yuan or $203 billion to try to boost its small businesses, the real estate market, and general infrastructure. It's been giving tax breaks for households and making borrowing easier so people can buy houses. Nonetheless, much more needs to be done to stimulate the Chinese economy during this difficult time, when even global warming with its droughts and heat waves have all kinds of knock-on effects, including the iron and steel industry last year saying their profits were down by more than 80%. Chinese farmers also had a really tough time. The US hasn't helped matters with its crackdowns on Chinese tech. Titans of Chinese tech industries, such as Tencent and Alibaba, for the first time reported that business was tough, and tens of thousands of Chinese folks working in tech lost their jobs. Maybe China will suffer some more internal problems. It's been close to failing before, as these headlines say. 2003, New York Times, Banking Crisis Imperils China. 2004, The Economist, The Great Fall of China. 2009, Fortune, China Must Find a Way to Recover. 2017 National Interest – Is China's Economy Going to Crash? Those headlines might have been music to some people's ears, but enjoying watching someone's downfall usually comes back to bite people in ways they didn't imagine. Under the Trump administration, a US government official proudly said, the United States can shape the collapse of China just as it did with the Soviet Union. We don't think he understood the ramifications of how disastrous this would be for the US. China needs the US as the US needs China. A severe Chinese economic downturn will roll over the world like a tsunami. As a Harvard University economist recently warned, a collapse in one region will raise the odds of a collapse in others. The two great nations can butt heads all they want, but the trade must keep flowing, and the gravy train must keep choo-chooing along while better relations are forged on the way. Competition and criticism on a global scale are healthy, but killing off rivals completely might be deadly for both sides. Be careful what you wish for. If that ever happens, one day citizens of the world might be reminded that cutting off one's nose to spite one's face is never a desirable outcome. Now you need to understand better how the US just paralyzed Chinese manufacturing overnight, or have a look at why China will never be a global superpower.